In the background, you can see Democracy Now!, Greta Thunberg. I have great respect and admiration for Greta because Greta is an Aspie and she got off her ass to do something about climate change and she did that to counteract her depression. And now she's an excellent climate change activist. Uh, she's bringing a lot of awareness to us uh, in this regard. Now, I got my first awareness in 1970. And I went to the very first Earth Day. I did quite a few things uh, in my activism. And then, like most people, I petered out. I became more concerned with my everyday life in pursuit of my version of the American dream. And of course, I was wrong uh, about this, and I admit it. And uh, this is what most of us, or the vast majority of us, have wrong. We, we're just going on with our everyday lives like nothing's going to happen. So we look at things like the Bahamas, and yes, it's not 100% that the Bahamas, uh, the Hurricane Dorian, is a result of, uh, a result of the uh, climate change crisis that we have. It's not 100%. It probably does have a great influence on it. Because we notice that hurricanes are greater in their intensity now in, in many cases, um, and that there's devastating effects when they are uh, over land. It's just one of the things. There's just so many things. Ice in Greenland is melting. There's massive fires all around the Arctic. Uh, the water level is going to start rising. The sea level is going to start rising. It hasn't risen that much in the last... Uh, 30 years compared to what it's going to do. It could rise as much in the next uh, 20 to 50 years as 25 feet. That's going to put your uh, coastal U.S. cities underwater, uh, and especially the East Coast. I, you know, and I'll probably be dead. I mean, I'm 66 now, and, you know, if I live another 20 years, I'll be 86, which wouldn't be um, unrealistic for me and my health and my family. However, things are going to get worse. Well, here I live in Arizona. It's hotter than ever. The, the uh, mean temperatures have been increasing. Uh, right now, we've had a horrible dry spell. We'll be Next year, if we don't get rain, we'll be in drought. So the, there's a lot of things happening. And, and, and the main thing that I'm here to bitch about this morning is that we're not doing anything. You and me and a couple million people here in the Phoenix area are sitting on our asses. We're not doing anything. So I go on the social media and people are basically jacking off. They're just jacking off. Oh, look at me. Look at what I'm doing. I look at all my money and look at my kids and, and look at all this and look at my food. And, oh, gee, I'm creating music. Look at me. And it's disgusting. It's it's very disgusting. And and I'm active as much as I can be. I'm pretty much uh, chair-ridden. Uh, so I'm active as much as I can be right now. And, and my activism is centered in being an armchair uh, bitch forum. Uh, so I bitch from my comfort of my armchair. And that's what I do. That's, that's the extent of what I can do. I write. I donate money. I donate money to causes that really get results. Uh, and then, you know, I see all these people wanting money for various things, and I, I really sympathize uh, with people that need money for their medical expenses, but what's the problem there? They shouldn't have to ask for money. They should, we, the government, we should be paying for that. They, the medical expenses should be covered by Medicare for all. Well, this is uh, tragic, and it's bullshit. And your Republican your insurance lobby are all about the profit. They don't give a fuck about people. If they really cared about people, we wouldn't have this situation. We'd be like the rest of the world, where if you're really sick, you get treatment. There's a lot of problems in that area, all the way from there's not enough personnel 
the pharmaceutical prices being way too high, gra vastly inflated, to not enough doctors. There, there's just a shitload uh, of things there, and, and they can all be cured if we stop worrying about the fucking money. You know, another thing is, too, there's a report that came out from the UN which said if the we invest around the world next 10 years $1.7 trillion in counteracting climate change, it can produce $7.1 trillion in revenue. 7.1, that's six times, seven times the money return on the investment. So come on, what's stopping it? Fossil fuel lobby, insurance lobbies, all the big lobbies, defense contract lobbies. These are the ones, the defense contractors are one of the biggest culprits and enemies of life on earth. They're enemies of life on earth. Now, if you support someone like Trump, you're an enemy of all life on the planet because of what he's doing. People don't want to believe it because they, a lot of these people believe in that lame mythology of Christianity. They believe in that bullshit. That's bullshit. That shit's not true. Yes, there are some truisms and, the, you know, there's some good advice and all that. And people need to uh, uh, transcend. There's a part of the brain where if you do a meditation or a prayer or things like that, you can transcend and you can get the high out of that and it gives you peace of mind. However, simple mindfulness med meditation is much more effective. <laughs> but these people are stupid. They believe, uh, some of these nuts believe that this dumpster bastard was sent by uh, Jesus to help us, that God sent Trump to save us. He's not saving us. He's killing us. He's stealing money. His, his decrepit family is stealing money. They're, they're disgusting. They're a bunch of grifters. They were born into grift. And it's, you know, there's so much evidence to this. There's just so many facts that support uh, my claims. I don't need to present the sources. Hey, you can Google them. Yeah, some of them are false. and Some of them are very correct. They're right on the money. These bastards are all about the money. Don't fool yourself. This guy doesn't couldn't find his ass with both hands and a flashlight. All he knows how to do is to steal. He's really good at grifting and stealing. But somehow, in the end, he doesn't retain his wealth. And all he does is puke on the fly. He's like that, that huckster salesman who gets given a batch of products every week. Anyway, he, he's, a he's a loss. This guy is not a gain. He's a loss. He doesn't play win-win. He plays win-lose. He likes to see people lose. And he likes to win from people and companies and countries losing. We can't afford to be in that situation. We can't afford it. We don't have much time. We have to act. That means me, that means you, that means everybody. And all this time you waste showing me all your new kids and your, your pregnancy shots and all this ridiculous fucking selfish bullshit. Now, if you knew, let's just suppose that you knew that the world would not be saved in 10 years unless we get off our asses. Would you have children? Would you bring children into a world that was doomed to fail for humanity? Where humanity was doomed to fail? Would you bring children into that kind of a world? Would you bring children into the hardship that could occur? Yeah, uh, you know, a lot of us are safe. We have our income. We have uh, here, in, here in Phoenix where I live, it's hotter than hell. And we have our air conditioning, so we're safe in the nice air conditioning. Uh, and a lot of people spend money and time and dump carbon into the atmosphere and go on these vacations and go to the beach. The beach is wonderful. I love the beach. I grew up on the beach. I spent many summers on the beach when I was a kid. It was wonderful. And that's when there was probably about 20 million less people in California. Now there's so many goddamn people over there. I'm not going. I don't want to go. I don't like it there anymore. 
I mean, I love the country, and uh, some of the people that I know over there, I love them dearly, especially in Northern California, and uh, the environment and all of that, and uh, I love it. But there's too many people. There's too much congestion. There's too much greed. You know, they, uh, this son of a bitch in, in D.C. has sent this task force out to L.A. to deal with homelessness. Well, you know, and, and they have uh, some good ideas about it. If you build affordable housing, if you build housing where people can live so they don't have to live on the, on the street, that'd be great. But they're not going to do it. They're going to turn this into a fucking money-making scheme for private companies. Yes, maybe some of these regulations that they have regarding building affordable housing need to be removed. It certainly needs to be examined in great detail and restructured so that it can be built on the cheap with, with excellent quality materials, meeting codes, and uh, being you know renewable green facilities. Yes, that needs to be done. All these facilities could be powered by renewable energy. All, all good. They could all be solar uh, powered, they could all have wind uh, power feeding in, but they could all be self sustaining and they could all have air conditioning. Because in California, let's face it, man, during the day, if you're not right on the ocean, there's going to be a problem with heat. Okay, going to be a problem. So they're going to need all that anyway. So that price, that crisis can be solved if people are less greedy. So in realtors, uh, mortgages, profit, uh, property taxes. When all these factors combine, and uh, when you have income inequality, there's homelessness. That's how it happens. There's a lot of factors involved. It's a complica complicated, complex situation, and we know that. And, and you know, uh, this prick in D.C., he wants to blame, you know, Democrats for it. Well, yeah, Democrats, uh, you know, Democrat politicians, uh, administrators, they, they do have a role in this. But so do greedy companies. Greedy companies have a huge role in this. In fact, the whole problem in our country comes from greedy companies. Our, our warlike activities come from greedy companies. Everything comes from greedy companies. It does. The fossil fuel industry, one of the greediest, most destructive uh, enemy of life on earth band of companies uh, moving away from them you've got the insurance lobby which makes us unhealthy for all 48 million people don't have insurance now those of us who do some of us are not getting very good care and we're having to come out of pocket for too much we've got defense industry and the contractors the, the grafting greedy contractors We've got those guys. Those those people are really bad. In fact, they should be cut out of the deal. Uh, we've got a bloated military-industrial complex, which has uh, planted its minions in our legislative body across the country and in Washington, D.C. Okay, we've got that. We've got the insurance lobby, like I was saying. It just goes on and on, uh, this list of for-profit companies that are destroying the world. Either they need to get with the program. Now, a business roundtable came out with something like that. But is Jeff Bezos uh, and Amazon, are they going to pay what they should pay in taxes? Are they going to pay even 21% of their profit in taxes? Are they going to do that? Fuck no. These, that whole list of companies, I think there's 60 of them that didn't pay any taxes, that are big companies. Are they going to pay any taxes? Fuck no, they're not going to pay any taxes. Are they going to really invest? in the communities where their businesses are embedded to rebuild the infrastructure so the whole community can benefit for it? Fuck no. They're only going to do it on a limited basis to attempt to look good. They're not going to do shit. So there we go. Herein lies the problem. Okay. Uh, and it's destroying the world. And unless we stop these people, we take the money away from them, and we do need to take the money away from them. Uh, I love, uh, there's an analysis done of Elizabeth Warren's uh, plan to tax the rich. And they were going to get cut several hundred billion dollars. That's wonderful. They should be. 
if we take this money on a yearly basis and invest it back in our infrastructure and invest it back into creating a green, renewable economy and country, we got it licked, man. We're going to do it. It's going to happen for us. But the big problem here, however, the big problem here is the rest of the world. You got China and India just dumping shit, dumping shit into the environment, fucking things up. They have to change. Brazil's got to change. You know, all the big polluters have to stop. You don't have to worry about the third world countries. They don't have enough resources to dump. Everybody else needs to get with the program. We need to be one of the leaders of the way. We need to show the way, and we need to organize everybody and get everybody in the world together. If we don't, we're done. We're dead. And if you're going to disagree with me, that's fine. You can go on with your everyday life. And then, you know, I, I'm, almost, uh, I'm almost sad because I won't be around to see most of you fuckers meet your end. Yeah, and okay, that's negative, and I know. It's not a good way to cross the aisle and meet with people and all that. Look, that attitude has got us where we are. No, we don't need to be authoritarian. Yes, we do need to take charge. We need to get assertive. And we need to fix this. And we can make this a great world for all of us. Poverty has gone way down in the last 20 years across the world. It could go down even more. Uh, poverty in this country can be eliminated. Uh, homelessness can be eliminated here and in the rest of the world. All these things can be, they can get done. We can get these things done. However, we have to unite. And the people that don't want to unite have to be pushed out of the way. They don't need to be abused. They don't need to be harmed in any way. They just need to get pushed out of the way and allowed to have their voice. And if they're right about things, uh, if they voice that it's correct, then we need to take note of it and we need to uh, also implement that. However, most of them are wrong. Most of them are living in la-la land. They're in fantasy land. Anyway, I can go on and on about this. Um, here's the last thing, 9-11. Horrible horrible event that happened and people uh, there's a lot of things happening which are memorializing the first responders and the people who died in that horrible tragedy uh, that's wonderful I think that's the way it should go however what happened we spawned two wars out of that that have probably killed well over a million people and several thousand of our military so was the result of 9-11, the revenge that was taken, was that worth it? And what people failed to see was what Ward Churchill was chastised for, which is that we caused this indirectly. We've caused this by our little adventures, which are caused by the business community. The international business community has caused us to exploit the resources and the peoples and the rest of the world. This is why people hate the United States. This is why the United States got attacked. It could have been avoided. I mean, helping the Saudis, that's fucking ridiculous. This whole thing with this right-wing government in Israel. I mean, Israel, you know, I, I really don't think that Israel has the right to exist as an as a extreme Zionist state. I really don't. Maybe as a, a, a state that's all-inclusive of the people's of the region. You don't come from Europe, push people out of a region, and establish a state based on a historicity which is very limited, which doesn't represent what really happened historically 3,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago. So this whole Israel thing, is, it really sucks. And uh, that's why people hate us. Okay, that's why people hate us. They hate us because that's why the Arabs hate us. We don't have a right to go in and, unlike the neocons tried to do, and impose our way of life on anybody else on the planet. We don't have a right to do that. If people want us to come, a majority of people want us to come, and we have a plan to help them, that's great. But we don't. Most of our plans have failed miserably. And we need to get out of that business. We can't unite the world behind looking like the largest terrorist country in the world. We can't do it.
And that's what we're looked upon as, if you look at the Gallup polls that have been done. Anyway, that's enough out of me. It's Wednesday. It's hump day. Do some humping, but don't make any spawn. Yeah, keep those spawn going down the reproductive channels and into the environment and not as babies. We don't need more babies. We need less babies and more involvement. So take care, everybody. Love each other. Be kind to each other. And when you disagree with people that are in the way of the progress we need to make, push them out of the way. Be nice. Let them talk. But keep going. Let's just keep on.